Mm, all right, problem six. We have scientists estimate that the distribution of the lifespan of the Galapagos Islands giant tortoise is approximately normal with a mean of 100 years and standard deviation 15 years. Based on the estimate, which of the following is the closest to the age of the Galapagos Islands giant tortoise at the 90th percentile of the distribution? Okay, so let's just draw a little sketch of the normal distribution here. So it's normal with a mean of 100. Standard deviation of 15. So 100 is going to be in the middle here. And we essentially want to find the value, let's call it x, at the 90th percentile, meaning that there's only going to be 0.1 area to the right or 0.9 area to the left. So for this, you can use your table A and find the z score that corresponds to this um, area. But in your calculator, you have this function called inverse norm. You go distribution, inverse norm. And this, the way you work with this is that you enter the area to the left followed by the mean and the standard deviation of distribution. That's the syntax in this calculator. If you have a newer one, and it'll actually be easier to use, we'll probably just have like a list. But the syntax, area to the left, so we're going to enter 0.9. The mean of this distribution is 100. Standard deviation is 15. And then from there, I get an x value of about 119.223. So then the answer will be C, because that's the closest value. Seven, a uh, car rental agency has two locations in a city. The box plots below summarize the miles driven for one day of the single car rentals at each location. Based on the box plots, which statement provides the best comparison of the two locations? The number of single day rentals. So let's go through each one. The first one says the number of single day rentals is greater for location A than for location B. You can't tell. Um, if it's greater or less, because, um, well, first off, it's, it's um, well, it doesn't tell you any, it doesn't even tell you any value. It doesn't even tell you how many rentals each one, each location had. Remember, box plots just give you percentiles or percents. This gives you, this tells you 25% of the rentals fell in here and 25% fell in here, 25% fell in here. But you don't know how many in total had location A and how many in total had location B. So A wouldn't work. The number of single day rentals is less for location A than for location B. Yes, yeah, so the same thing with B. Couldn't tell anything from there. C, compare with location A, the mile is different for location B. Display more variability and the median is greater. Okay, remember more variability essentially means more spread, more variation. And the median in a box plot, this would be the median for A, and this would be the median for B. So the median for B is, actually, is in fact greater than it is for A, and there is a lot more variability in B's distribution than for A's. So um, looks like C will work. Let's just go over D and E briefly. Okay, so it's not D or E because it says location B display less variability in both of these. So it's definitely not D or E, so it's going to be C for sure. For the purpose of determining the value of its end of the year inventory, a clothing store creates a list at the end of the year of every item currently in stock along with each item's wholesale price. Which of the following is the best description of the end of the year activity? Okay, so it looks like we're looking at experiments versus sample surveys, a census. So this is not an experiment because experiment, you have, to, you have to basically test something. You have to test the treatment and, you know, try to see if the treatment has an effect on, you know, on your subjects or, what, or whatever, you know, you're testing animals or, you know, whatever. Um, but we're not, we're not testing anything. We're just recording data. 
So we're not, this is not going to be an experiment for sure. So sample survey versus census. Okay, so the key word here to recognize is that it says that it, they create a list of every item currently in stock. So when you have a census, the, by definition, a census is basically um, going to record data on every individual in the population, whereas a sample only records some, only a portion. So it's going to be E. It's not going to be C or D. It's going to be E because it says every item in, in the stock. All right, um, nine. A grocery store receives deliveries of corn from two farms, one in Iowa and the other in Ohio. Both farms produce ears of corn with mean weight 126 pounds. Standard deviation of the weights of the ears of corn from the farm in Ohio is 0.01 pounds greater than that from the farm in Iowa. A randomly selected ear of corn from the farm in Iowa weighed 1.39 pounds which has a standardized score of 1.645 for the distribution of weights for the Iowa corn. If an ear of corn from the farm in Ohio weighs 1.39 pounds, how many standard deviations from the mean is the weight with respect to the Ohio distribution? Okay, so this can be a little, like there's a lot of information here, but it's, it just, let's break it down. So we have two distributions. Um, Let's, let's, let's first look at the, we have oh, Iowa, the Iowa distribution, and then we have the, um, Ohio. Both of their means are 1.26, 1.26 pounds. The standard deviation and for the Ohio, so we know it's going to be plus 0.01 more than the one in Iowa. Let's just make a note here for now. This is I'm not saying that this is what it is, but it's 0.01 more than the one for Iowa. So we need to find the standard deviation for Iowa. And for that, we're going to look at the fact that we're given um, uh, individual value x is we have a random the selected ear of corn that weighed 1.39 pounds and had a Z score or standardized score of 1.645. So we want to find um, uh, the Z score for um, an ear of corn in the Ohio distribution that weighed the same, that also weighed 1.39 pounds. So we want we need to solve for z here. This is our goal. Okay, so let's find the standard deviation of the Iowa distribution. If you remember what a z score is equal to, the standardized score of a distribution is equal to the observed value minus the mean over the standard deviation. So here the z score is 1.645. Our observed x value is 1.39. Our mean is 1.26 over the standard deviation. So we can solve for sigma here by multiplying that side by sigma and then dividing that by. So we could let's just swap the 1.645 and the sigma. So that divided by 1.645 gives standard deviation of 0 0.079. Now remember the Ohio standard deviation is 0 0.01 more than this one. So add 0 0.01 and for this we'll get 0 0.089. as the standard deviation. Okay, so now we can find the z-score by plugging these values in. Z will be 
1.39 minus the mean 1.26 divided by 0 0.089. divided by 0.089, we'll get about 1.46 standard deviations. And so the answer will be B. All right, 10. Okay, so we're told that the distribution of the number of hours worked by volunteers last year at a large hospital is approximately normal with mean 80 and standard deviation seven. So normal mean 80, standard deviation seven. Volunteers in the top 20% of hours worked will receive a certificate of merit. The volunteer from last year selected at random, which of the following is closest to the probability that the volunteer selected will receive a certificate of merit given that the number of hours the volunteer to work is less than 90. Okay, so this is a conditional probability. So um, let's first find what the probability is um, of being between, well, we have to find what the um, top 20 percentile is of this distribution. So we can know what the lower bound for the certificate of merit is. So the, middle, the mean is 80. We need to find the x value where there's 0.2 area to the left. So let's first do that. And again, we can use our inverse norm function. If there's 0.2 to the left, that means there's 0.8 to the right. Or sorry, 0.2. If there's 0.2 to the right, it means there's 0.8 to the left. So going back to the inverse norm that we just used a couple of problems ago. 0.8 with a mean of 80, standard deviation of seven. And so then our X value is 85.89. But now we're also told that the, the number of hours worked is less than 90. So we're looking now more specifically, sorry, let me make that a little better. Of the, we're looking for the probability between 85.89 and 90 in this same distribution. So 90 and 85.89. So for this, we use our, we can use our normal CDF function. Lower bound is 85.89. Upper bound is 90, mean is 80 again, standard deviation of seven. And then this probability is 0.123. Now don't get fooled here because the initial um, answer that you may want to pick is B. Um, that's, remember, this is a conditional probability because so we have to do one more thing because we're told that given that the number of hours, we're told, we're told on a condition. So we're told that they received, um, what's, we're told that if they're going to receive a, a certificate of merit, they're going to be, you know, anywhere from, they're going to have anywhere from above 85.89 hours but less than 90 hours. So you essentially want to then figure out what the probability is that they would just have less than um, 90 hours overall. Like what would this, what would the area to the left be? Because you're told that the condition is that they, are, they have less than 90 hours. So you want to find what's the probability that you know x is less than 90. And again, we do one more calculation with our normal CDF. This time our lower bound, you can put negative like a 10,000, upper bound 90, mean 80, standard deviation seven. 
So let me just draw the picture. So this this area here is about point nine two three four whatever. And so we take this value and divide it by that. So point so we go point one two three divided by the point nine two three four. And then that gives us our answer of about one, about 13.3% or 0.133. And the closest answer we got is C. The answer will be C.